Just a reminder that overall rates are down, but the yield curve is steeper than we were at a year ago, and that is how banks make money. Uh, second thing, I think deal activity is actually going to be better than people think. There was a lot of hesitancy because of Brexit, people waiting to see how that shook out. And frankly, the point you made about higher asset values, uh, fees as a percentage of AUM are relatively fixed, and so when we get this kind of 30% move in the market, fees go up by a lot. So I think we're going to have growth, and the nice thing is the expectations aren't too high. Let's explore that a little further. Jason Goldberg from Barclays joins us. J Jason, to the point there about where we are relative to expectations, uh, you, you think that net interest income, in fact, could surprise a little bit to the upside, including guidance for the year ahead, uh, because there's been such doom and gloom around uh, lower interest rates. No, I, I think the key point with the net interest margin, if you look, you know, the median bank was down about eight basis points in the second quarter and another eight basis points in the third quarter. I think what you'll see in the fourth quarter, as banks really start to lower their deposit pricing, you'll actually see the rate at that margin climb slow. So the median bank down closer to four to five basis points, which we think as you start to think about 2020 results, um, margins should begin to level off in the not so distant future, allowing more of that loan growth to drive net interest income higher, particularly in the back half of this year. And in terms of uh, the top line for uh, across all of the banks, do, do you see the year ahead as one which that could be flat or even declining? So how important will, uh, will things like cost control and buybacks be? Yeah, so yeah, we, we don't forecast a, a whole lot of revenue growth when we think about 2020. But I think, interestingly, um, if you think about, you know, earnings expectations or for like EPS expectations for the kind of mid-single-digit type growth. But if you bifurcate that between the first half of the year and the second half, you know, the first half will be up around 2 percent. Um, so not a lot driven a lot by share repurchase. Um, but the back half of the year should be up closer to 8 percent um, because the first half of the year is impacted by, you know, the full impact of, you know, the 2019 Fed cuts. Um, so you should see growth kind of pick up throughout the year. But to your point, you know, expenses are, are continue to be in focus for this group um, as they continue to drive, uh, drive revenue growth faster than expense growth. So, Jason, given the big move we've seen in bank stocks, especially in recent months, what are your top picks? What names would you steer clear of as we go into earnings? Yeah, no, I mean, the group, you know, was up, as you said, close to 40 percent last year. We think the group can continue to work higher um, during the course of 2020, certainly not as much as we saw last year, given I think the pace of, you know, multiple expansion, you know, won't be as great. Um, we are partial to the biggest banks, um, you know, so Citigroup, J.P. Morgan, B of A, you know, all benefit. Um, from, you know, continued loan growth, slowing of margin compression. We think fee income could be higher, could control costs, asset quality remains really benign, and share, box by, share repurchase remains very active. In fact, we think in the fourth quarter, you could see the largest quarterly decline in shares outstanding we've seen since the financial crisis. What, what are you uh, waiting to hear from Charlie Schaff on the Wells Fargo call? Yeah, so, you know, Charlie's first earning call, you know, is, is tomorrow. I think there's a lot of focus on expenses. Um, you know, they clearly are running a lot higher there. Um, then it appears, you know, some of that tied to them working through their regulatory issues. And I think the question is, is when could he start to bring those costs down? Um, and then, you know, what or how far, far behind are they, on, if at all, on their technology spend? You know, one of the first things Charlie did when he got to Bank of New York a couple years ago was increase their investments in technology as of several areas he wanted to play catch up in. And we're curious what his current assessment is on Wells Fargo.